Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mo's. In today's episode we're going to be looking at the mount field, uh, I think it's a 4, what is it? Uh, 474 with a um, SV150 engine on it as well. Um, this one came um, from a tip and it, do you know what, I don't think there's a lot wrong with it. It ran in the last video and when I did a job lot, I don't know how it would start now. Um, but it just seems like everything is loose and it just wants a, just a damn good tidy is all it needs. So it may not be a, a big video at all. Um, but literally um, it ran initially on the first video. Um, the pull cord's a bit slack, the grass box, uh, the air box is hanging off and it's, it's just, it looks tired and tired and wore out. So we're a little bit of a facelift and a bit of a bit of a, having a quick little look, see what is actually wrong with the machine. Uh, it might be a quick little flip, um, in for nothing, out for, out for good, good profit. So we'll see how we get on. If this is your first time watching Mixed Mo's, hit the subscribe button, whack the bell, set notifications to all, that way you'll be told when I've done a video or two more on my Saturday night weekly live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty, and let's check out this little Mountfield lawnmower that just needs a bit of TLC. Okay, here it is, a uh, little mount field. Um, it's just got bits and pieces everywhere. I've got a bit of a, what looks like a fencing wire or something along that line tied around a dead man. Not quite sure why that's on there. Obviously someone had a problem with it at some point. Let's take that off, because it I won't sell it with it on there if I can get it off. There's my slippers. Let's get the old Nipex out. Cheers, Luke. I don't know quite what I put that on there. It might want a cable mount or adjusting or something like that, maybe. This one's in a proper little tie up. Let's get rid of that. So that's that gone. I've got a load of it up here. I don't know if you can see it up on top of the handlebars. An absolute rake of it up here. Look, see that? So let's get rid of all that lot. That's no good for nothing. We'll get rid of that. Um, and everything else just seems to be loose. So literally all I'm going to do is spend the next two or three seconds just tightening, tightening things up and then that way we can get a bit of a better picture of what's actually going on with this machine. So that's all tight, that's tight, these are loose, that one there is loose. So it's got a drive mower as well. I'll get a cable time and push them cables over a bit more. In fact, we don't want to be over there. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that one. Let's get rid of that. That's better. And we'll, and we'll reroute these cables down, down this one side. That'd be a bit tidier there. <clears throat> I'm going to get a cable tie. Just start tidying it up, you know. I don't think it could just be a possibility someone, you know, Father's Day or whatever, got a new mower and just outed their old one. It could be as simple as that. So let's reroute these cables. That's a bit better. We like that, that's a bit tidier. Someone's already been in and adjusted that drive cable up by the looks of it. That's it, right, we're happier now. So now we've got a bit more, a better look at it. The pull cord, as you, as you can see, isn't doing a lot. So I think we'll put a new pull cord on there anyway. Let's start with that, okay? Gotta start somewhere, Mick. <clears throat> So let's just investigate the pull cord. Just to see what's occurring. Let's see how much pull cord we've got on here. And we're looking at around about, mm, about five and a half, six feet. So I'm gonna renew it, but it doesn't seem to be taking it all back in, so. I'm going to renew that. I've got some new pull cord turned up. Um, someone asked me the other day what I use. I use 3.5 for a lot of my pull cords. 3.5 seems to be the, uh, the norm. So I'm just going to melt the end of this one. Melt that up. Don't, bu don't burn your fingers. Now, the, the pull cord I use is called Rockwood. R-O-C Wood. W-O-O-D. That's a company that I use, or the, the product I use. Um, not affiliated, not sponsored. It's just a good product. It's a, it's a good, strong nylon cord, which is what I like. Now you want about seven feet 
because it's going to go around a pull cord and then it's going to go up the arm. If it doesn't go up the arm, you want about five feet, okay? So I'll cut that off with my Nipex pliers. Cheers, Luke. Um, we'll melt that one off. One fingers. That's it. Put that over there. Pair of long nose pliers to hand. And all we're going to do, pull that pull cord all the way out to there. Now these are a bit trickier because uh, we don't have nowhere where you can actually physically get hold of it. Get your long nose pliers on the inside. Just pull that knot out slightly on the inside. Get your, your nip axes or whatever you use. Cut that off. Take that out. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and just, just wind this pull cord on a touch more. See how much I can get out of it. Well, that's had two full revolutions on that. I don't go much more than that. So we'll give that an extra two winds, so that's going to help straight away. It could have been that the pull cord actually snapped on the previous owner and uh, he managed just to catch it. So we'll see how we get on. I'm going to try and thread this through that little tiny hole, which has got a bit of dirt in there by the looks of it. Let's get a screwdriver or something. Might go the other way. You can use a G clamp if you want. Oh, that's why. I'm going on the wrong, going on the wrong side. Holes on the side, not in the face of it. The hole's going to be about here somewhere. Where are you? goes so now we tie a hole a tie knot in this end quite getting good at tying one-handed knots at the moment it's just something you have to do as a lawnmower guy tie one-handed knots and then bring that all the way down to the end to about there that'll do Pull that back through. Tie it off nice and tight. Get my, my snips. Cut that off. You want it just tucked away. Uh, it's going to be about there. Get your lighter. Burn that off. Cool. Pull that through. That ain't going nowhere. And when you know when you release that, that's got a bit more tension on there now. And it will nigh on suck up nearly all of that, all of that pull cord. Okay, all bar about a foot. And you want another foot just to go up the handle. Okay. So that's now got about five foot, six foot inside that pull cord handle there. This all looks good in here. Bit of a blow-off. Good. We can now fit that back onto there. Uh, we want to take the um, pull cord out of the other end, the actual pull cord arm, and fit that up into there and tie a good size knot in there as well. Put two in there. Bish bash bosh, pull a dead man in. And then pull your your, your arm, your, your pull cord all the way up to the top, and it needs to sit inside this little tiny groove here, like so. And now you see there's proper tension on that pull cord just there. Okay, uh, so that's that. Air box looks like it's hanging off. That's a bit of a clean, but uh, we'll go with it for now, and we'll give it a clean just a tick. Don't want to introduce no more dirt. That's a problem. Oh, 
Oh, let's fit that onto there where it belongs. That's better. All right. That's a better fit. I'm happy with that. Let's check for fuel. <clears throat> it's got a little bit of fuel in there. <clears throat> We do up these 10 mil bolts on this uh, pull cord assembly. So it might be a quick video, you know, someone might just throw it away just because they got a new one. You know, and that's what it is, that's what it is. I can only record what, what comes into the old shack. Let's have a quick little tip up to get rid of a brass box. Quick little tip up, see what we've got under here. Uh, the blade cover, that's right underneath it, that's really clean, man. That's really clean. I think the blade's had a bit of a wallop and the blade is uh, on upside down. So we'll change that around straight away. <clears throat> so maybe that's why we got rid of it. Maybe we got rid of it because um, it was, they hit something and then they had to then um, Take the blade off, put a new blade on maybe or whatever, and uh, they put the blade on back upside down. I'll double check you, I'm not being silly, I'm not being silly. Let me get you in. Now, I've got a brand new toy, which I think this is in my last video, which as of yet, I haven't used. I'm quite looking forward to it. Let's just uh, move it old camera a touch better. Right, so this blade's actually upside down here. Here's a cutting edge of a blade here, and that's for lift. Um, so that's actually upside down. So I've got here in my arsenal now from a Mrs. P who loves me lots. She bought me this little cookie, half inch impact. So now I've got my half inch impact and I've got my little tiny um, baby impact and I've also got me my D-Walk drill. No, I'm not affiliated for anyone ask. No, I ain't being paid. So yeah, I'm a D-Walk guy. I like my D-Walk stuff. Each of their own. So now, hopefully, I can now remove these without having to fire up my air gun. Uh, what torque set are we on? Number two, that do. Let's put that on, see how we get on. Oh my lord, and that, don't that just make that so much easier. <clears throat> so literally, that's how it was on, but as you can see, that blade should go the other way. That's how it should go. And actually, that blade's got a really good edge on it. A really good edge, but it would have, because it's not being used. Um, so that don't need touching. So we put that back on where it belongs. And we'll impact that back up with a new gun. That's on there. So I'm liking my new impact gun already. That's a, that, that saves about an hour. So that's good. Um, blaze now on as it should do, and it will now cut probably. Got a good edge on it too. So we're happy with that. We've got a bit of a fuel leak coming from somewhere. Where's that fuel leak coming from? Is that fuel? No, that's water. That's water. That's okay. Right, so what we're going to do now is uh, I've done nothing to it other than literally what you just seen me do. I've done nothing to this machine. Um, the plug looks to be... Oh, I'll tell you what it was. I'll tell you what it was. On this machine, just remember now, this machine, the, um, the boot had come off, hadn't it? Now in there, I'm convinced in there is actually the, um, the cap to this spark plug. I'm convinced that's what's in there. But it goes on. Um, or someone's changed the boot over, it's the wrong boot for it. So now let's have a quick little fire up. We've got petrol, we've got a spark plug, uh, oil. Typical SV150, we're gonna it's going to want to have all the oil filler come out in one go, which is standard on these machines. Ask the mower man. Unfortunately, mower man is now gone. I suspect he still watches. But, uh, yeah, my mower man stopped doing his videos. That's a bit of a gutter. I like to hold Paul. He's a good lad. But he may come back to watch a video now and again. You never know. You never know what he's up to. So, a pair of mole grips or a pair of pliers would we'll just see... He'll laugh if he sees this video because he knows exactly what I'm talking about. These SV150s, they all do exactly the same. Whenever you take the oil filler out, they always, always, always come out with it. Don't put them in there. 
and now that shouldn't come out with it. Can I get up? Yeah, perfect. They all do it. Uh, I've got some all in there. Do you know what? I don't know how much all is actually in that. <clears throat> I don't want it to be too much. So, diagnosis so far, off the top of my head. I know the H Chili boot had come off, but it was already on there, so I reckon they might just pull that off in, in uh, the reason why it wasn't cutting right. I think the reason they got rid of this machine is because there's no oil in it, and because um, <clears throat> I honestly think it wasn't cutting. So it could have been that they bought it from a car boot or something along that line, <clears throat> and uh, bought, it, bought it off of somebody else who's mucked about with it, and it, and it don't cut their lawn. You know, it don't cut the lawn as, as they want it to, so they've got, they got rid of it. Could have been that. And all because, the man with milk tray, all because um, the blades went upside down. Could have been. So let's just put a little dripping of oil in first to see how low this actually machine is, before we go too far. And it could be a real quick turnaround. I'd love it if it is. It's not a good video for you guys, but for me, Profit-wise, nothing other than a quick little service. The machine's up and running. So now we've got oil in, we're just above the minimum mark. So it wasn't empty, empty. So it shouldn't have done no damage. Yeah, just above the minimum mark. And I only put about ooh, 100, 100 mil in. So another 200 mil will go in, just under 150. About there, I'm gonna touch more for experience. Touch more there, and that should be enough oil to run this machine for the season. We'll let that run down through, I'll check it again before we uh, go outside with it. Um, so that's it, so done nothing to it. A new pull cord, spark plug is original. Um, Air filters are clean. Don't know about the car, but yet we should see. We've got no sticker on the front of this, but I know Conquer was after one. I've got several up here. I do keep them, you see. Mountfield stickers. Always sells better when you've got a little sticker on the front. See? So that'll go onto there. We'll super glue that onto there in a bit. No problemo. Wants a bit of a clean off. Let's get a little fire. See if it'll actually fire for me. It may do, it may not. Because don't forget that cable had all that stuff around, around this dead man, so it may, it may not be making that switch. We shall see in a minute. Right, on to choke. Dead man in. All right, let's see what happens. Try and make a bit of room here. Ugh, a glass box. All right, pull it, see what happens. Something slipped then, I felt something slip, I think. I'm not quite sure. carburetor tune i don't think it's got a bent crank it doesn't feel like it it's not shaking like like, like a, i would expect it to but it does want picking up slightly on the revs now it could be something as simple as all the linkages up here are all bone dry and they all require just a little tiny bit of uh, lubrication so let's put a little bit of wd-40 on there first We're going to blow that off and then we'll put some maintenance lube on there.
good. Bit of maintenance loop. Just around the around the uh, the throttle area. Just to help help make it run. And to turn and do its bit, I'm gonna put a bit on the back of the governor. There's a fuel. Let's put a bit up in there. Yeah, I'm a, a break. Right, happy. Let's put that back on. So we'll have a proper clean down before it even goes out goes out the market. But um, for now, let's see how we get on. Let's try again then. Let's get another pull. So it's all good. It hasn't got a bent crank. I know it hasn't. Um, maybe the engine's a bit loose or something. Yeah, maybe it wants a bit of a tighten up. It's just got a little bit of a vibrate to it, but it could be that the blade's had a wallop. Um, that's why it may be upside down. So I do have a spare blade I can put on that. That's no biggie. Um, I've got to check that out just, just for squaring. So I don't think it is, don't think it is, is um, bent at all. It's not shaking on, on the top of the arms. It's now running better too. Um, did you see that I adjusted the idle because it wasn't idling beforehand? Now these machines here, you can just hammer right them with some black hammer right to bring them up. But even just a bit of WD-40, just to soak into the paintwork, brings them up an absolute treat. And don't forget, WD-40, it's got magical properties. Harry Potter himself uses it. So, quick little bath. Um, and all I'm going to do to this machine is um, give it a wipe down, put the sticker on. Blade is fantastic. I'm going to give the um, air filter a good clean. <clears throat> I might even put a new spark plug in as well. Because uh, the old one, that one does look, does look quite old. And that's it. That's all I'm going to be doing. Um, and sometimes that's just the way it goes, people. You know, you come here for, for a, a repair video. And if it don't need repairing, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. The carby seems to be okay. It's not hunting, and trust me, um, these little SV150 engines, if there was an issue with a carburetor, it would tell me. Because uh, these ones do like to hunt and search and what have you. So I'm not quite sure why the dead man's handle had all that stuff around it. No idea. Uh, but I will fully test it throughout the next coming, coming days. Just literally, I'll take that sticker off. Just literally um, to make sure that it is doing its job. Apart from that, that's all that this little machine requires. It doesn't require any work. So you, you tell me in the comment section, why do you think they threw it away? Based upon your guys' at girls' experiences, and some of you are really experienced, you tell me, why did they park this machine out? This machine come, come from a scrapyard, for, or from a, from a recycle center. So why did they actually throw this machine out? Right, I'll meet you outside in two ticks. Right, here it is. Done, air filter cleaned, new spark plug gone in. Hot adjustment all works. She's good to go. On the choke.
idles. Does what it should do. Now I haven't noticed anything wrong with the machine. Bit of movement in this top of this pull cord assembly just here, but I think it's just cheap plastic, that's what it is, you know. I do somebody without a doubt there you go mountfield 474 done did nothing to it really uh pull cord didn't need doing um it, it would start as it was but uh, it was about two foot too short um i put a new plug in just just for good measure it's had an oil change the blade was good i tidied the air filter up as well it's all good to go you know it does nothing so i asked you guys a question why was that thrown out why was that at recycling center uh, because when i got it the htd cap was hanging off I'm guessing they knew it was it was like that anyway because it's one of those caps you have to remove the spark plug cap at the very end of the spark plug. So that, that was the original as per what it was. So maybe they threw it out just because of that. I don't know. Maybe because the blade was upside down, they bought it from a car boot sale or something along that line and the blade was upside down and they wouldn't cut the grass. Maybe, I don't know. Put in the comment section, let me know what you think. Unfortunately, that's the video content. It is, um, it is what it is. I said I would show you a job lot and that's, that's how I'm working through them. So they're not really repairs. Um, it just makes me sort of wonder why people throw away good money because I've been down to my local my local shop just recently, um, a local hardware sort of um, outlet, big big chain outlet, and uh, you can't buy a lawnmower, a uh, petrol lawnmower for under two hundred and thirty pounds. They don't do them. They don't exist. I think the cheapest one they do is about two hundred and forty five pound, two two fifty for the cheapest lawnmower they do in that out retail outlet. There are other shops that do sell them a lot cheaper than that. But there's a reason why they're that cheap. It's as simple as that. Um, but anyway, that's what it is, I'm afraid. Um, not the best video in the world. Um, didn't exactly get down and dirty, but that's how I like them too. If, if I can get a job lot of machines that come in and I can just flip them straight around, quick old change, spark plug, tighten the old um, pull cord up and push them back out again, that's how uh, you can make a little bit of extra pocket money doing this little tiny hobby that I do. If it's your first time watching Mixed Mowers, hit the subscribe button, whack your bell, set notifications to all. That way you'll be told one done a video or two on my Saturday night weekly live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. I look forward to the next episode of Mixed Mowers very, very soon. But until then, people, don't forget, much more importantly, take it easy.